Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's lesson is the seventh lesson in my Happy Hips, Happy Knees and Happy Feet series. It follows on closely from the lesson six which I put up last week. It involves very similar movements and it's an intermediate lesson between that lesson and the lesson that I hope to teach next week. Um, but if you haven't done the previous lesson, don't worry because it's a lesson that stands alone in its own right. But if you have done it, I think you'll find it a very interesting progression from the previous lesson. Please begin by lying down on your back and lengthen the legs if that's comfortable on your, on your back. For many people it isn't, so if it isn't uh, comfortable then don't be afraid to change the position of the, of the legs. And take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor. It takes a little bit of time, a minute or so, perhaps a little bit longer, for the nervous system to recognise that you're lying down on the floor and that there's no longer any need to hold you up against gravity. So just take a moment to notice the overall contact into the floor. Begin to follow in your mind's eye the line of the spine from where you make contact on the back of the head. Follow the line of your spine so that you'll begin to notice the sweep of the curve of the cervical spine, the area of the neck. Just follow the line of the, the spine there and then discover the next part of your spine that actually makes contact into the floor and then continue to follow the spine along the floor and discover the next part of the spine where it begins to leave the floor which would begin the curve of the lumbar spine and then discover again the next part of the spine that where it comes into into contact. So you just form a general image or um, snapshot of the curves of the spine and then continue to project the line of your spine, your midline, beyond your tailbone towards the end of your mat and then just think about how you're organised around that centre line. So you might feel one part of, the, of yourself pressing more into the floor compared to the other. So just note that with a curiosity and then um, imagine you are lying on a balance beam, a gymnastics balance beam and just sense or feel how you're organised on that imaginary balance beam and you might discover that there's a tendency to roll off to one side. So for me I can feel certainly the left side of my pelvis is uh, would be the one part to roll off the beam first and that um, reflects my general pattern. I'm right-handed. So just notice these things and then just slowly roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. Just giving yourself permission to do a very easy movement. So you're not looking to force or stretch anything but just discovering for yourself how it is today to roll the head to one side compared to the other. And then please bring both your legs to standing. Have them a comfortable distance apart from each other. And think you are lying on a clock. And 12 o'clock is, the clock is painted on the back of your pants. 12 o'clock is towards the head. 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Could you begin to just gently press into your feet to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock. So your lower back flattens towards the floor and then you think of the feet becoming light to help you arch the lower back away from the floor. So you press down into the feet to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock so you're never actually lifting the pelvis you're just in a way flattening the lower back towards the floor and then to go to six o'clock you think of the feet becoming light to arch the lower back so it comes more away from the floor. And then once you've got used to using the legs in this way to help you move the pelvis, 
begin to more actively recruit the abdominals. So you think, I think, of a spot two inches below my navel and I'm pulling that area deeply back towards the spine to help flatten the lower back towards the floor. And then you think of pushing out that area actively. So don't be shy about doing that to help arch the lower back. So you press into the feet, pulling in the tummy to go to 12 o'clock. You think of pushing out the tummy and the feet becoming light to get the arch in the lower back. So just explore that a few times and then pause and then lengthen your left leg. Keep the right leg standing and begin to explore, can you press into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left, but not just towards the left, it's you're trying to roll the movement towards the left shoulder or the ribs on the left hand side. So it's very tempting to just kind of half press into the foot and to contract the back muscles to try and push the pelvis over. So if that's happening for you, just take a bit of time, be patient with yourself to really explore, can you press into the right foot, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling and maybe pulling in the tummy a little bit more strongly on the left hand side so that you're really transferring the movement from the foot into the hip joint and then making sure it it rolls the back into the floor on the left <coughs> excuse me on the left hand side and then pause and then try that movement with the other leg so you let the left leg go long sorry the right leg go long have the left leg standing and then begin to explore <coughs> excuse me pressing down into the left foot so as to roll the movement towards the ribs on the right hand side, towards that right shoulder. So again, just practice this, trying to keep the knee looking towards the ceiling. And a sense of the thigh, the left thigh, as you push into the foot, lengthening away towards the knee, so you get this delicious opening in the hip joint. But if you were to let the knee drop into the side, you won't get the same um, opening in the hip joint as you would do if you were to keep it looking towards the ceiling. Good. Now pause and just take a rest for a moment just to notice the effects of those movements on the contact into the floor and then just very lazily roll the head again a little bit from the right and to the, to the left. So this morning, it's very interesting, I can feel very easy to roll to the left, not so easy for me to roll to the right. And maybe that has a connection to that pattern I discovered of the right side of the pelvis being a little bit lighter compared to the left. Now pause and then bring both legs to standing. And with the arms just comfortably by the side, see if you can press into both feet, pulling in the tummy, to bring the lower back closer to the floor. And as you do that, breathe out. So you press into the feet, pull in the tummy and breathe out. And make sure you are actually breathing out as you do this. So it's a little bit difficult for me to do and talk at the same time, but make sure you are breathing out. In other words, air is leaving your nostrils as you pull in the tummy. And as you just do this a few more times, notice what happens to the back. So I can feel how my chest is contracting the upper part of the chest, my shoulders just coming slightly forward as I breathe out and pull in the tummy. And then pause and then change this pattern so that when you press into the feet and pull in the tummy, you breathe in and then you release. So you press into both feet, pull in the tummy and breathe in. And you'll notice, it's if you're managing to do this, it's a very different movement in the chest. I can, it's almost as if my, my chest is expanding and lengthening 
to create more of a push through the spine towards my head. Good. And then please leave it alone and take a rest. Amazing how just the breath pattern can change the movement in the ribs and the, ch and the chest. Once you've rested, bring the legs back to Sunday and allow your right knee to drift out to the side. So I let the knee just drift out to the side. So I'm resting on the little toe side of that right foot. And you'll notice how the pelvis has probably rolled to the left to accommodate that change of position of the right leg. And then bring your left foot to rest on the right lower leg as close to the knee as you can but without pressing into the knee itself. So if you've had any kind of knee replacement recently and that this position is too strong for you, one option is just to have the left foot on the floor in front of the right shin. But if otherwise, if you're able to have the foot on the lower leg, have it on the lower leg and explore beginning to just gently press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right and as you're doing this still thinking of keeping the left knee looking towards the ceiling so as I gently push into the foot I think of the knee towards the ceiling and lengthening the thigh towards the knee at the same time and pulling in the tummy if I don't pull in the tummy what tends to happen is the lower back contracts and pushes the pelvis um, to the right, but also um, in the direction of the right knee. So see if you can change that by take, being patient with yourself, pressing into the left foot, pulling in the tummy, so that the movement goes more towards the ribs on the right hand side, towards that right shoulder. And then pause and change legs. So let the left knee drift out to the side, Bring the right foot to rest on the lower leg as close to the knee as you comfortably can. And keeping that right knee looking towards the ceiling, could you press into the foot to roll the pelvis <coughs> excuse me, to the left and towards the ribs on the left hand side. So those ribs are being rolled a little bit more firmly into the floor. And just another thing you'll notice that each time you press into the foot, the, the right foot, the left knee comes down towards the floor. And as you release the pressure underneath the foot, the knee lifts a little bit. So do allow that to happen as you press into the, into the foot. Good. Now leave it alone, come back to centre and take a rest. So just really um, introduce those variations because we'll be using them quite a lot in the course of the lesson. Now, once you've rested, bring the legs back to centre and if you can, take your right arm overhead on the floor. So just take it overhead on the floor so it's more or less in line with the shoulder or as close to there as you can comfortably get without strain. So the palm of the right hand is looking, just need to shuffle down, is looking towards the ceiling. And then allow your right knee to drift out to the side and bring your left foot to rest on the right lower leg again, just as we did before, as close to the knee as you comfortably can get. And then begin to Press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right and towards that right sh shoulder. The idea here is can you, uh, can you sense the right arm or allow the right arm to lengthen a little bit more on the floor, the back of the hand sliding a little bit away from, from you. But as a result of pressing into the foot and creating this push through the skeleton towards that right shoulder, the idea it just lengthens that right arm. And you'll perhaps feel how some of the ribs on the left hand side 
as you push into the left leg, they come together to enable those right ribs to lengthen uh, and open to create that lengthening right arm. So if you try and keep the chest all the way down on the floor, the whole of the chest, it won't, won't be quite as effective. So, but see if you can feel the connection between the push into the foot to the lengthening of the right arm and then begin to turn the head and eyes as if you wanted to see that lengthening right arm. So you as you push into the foot, try and turn the head and eyes. And if you're able to see me on the screen, you'll notice to look, my chin moves away from the breastbone and my the back of my head slides a little bit in the direction of the left shoulder to help me see that lengthening right arm. Okay. Now pause, leave it alone, just take a rest for a, a, a moment. And just notice how that feels in terms of the contact into the floor. Interestingly, I feel <laughs> So my left side, my right side rather, has suddenly got a lot longer, a lot longer, longer, as those ribs have been asked to open. I feel my right shoulder higher on the floor compared to my left, and I have to roll the head a little bit from one side to the other. Again, I can feel it's now easier to easier to roll my head to the left. It's a different feeling to the right and that makes complete sense really because those ribs on the left hand side have been shortening as the ribs on the right have been opening. Now please pause, bring the legs back to standing, take your right arm overhead again in the same way to the floor behind you, palm towards the ceiling. Allow the right knee to drift out to the side, bring the left foot to rest on the lower leg again in the same way and this time bring your attention to your left arm which is down by your side palm towards the floor and as you begin to press into the left foot to roll the pelvis towards that right shoulder to lengthen that right arm begin to think of lengthening your left arm down on the mat towards the feet so you lengthen that left arm down towards the feet and begin to roll the head and eyes to look towards that left arm as it lengthens down. And you'll begin to notice as you're doing all these things, if you allow the ribs again on the left hand side to soften you're able to reach that left arm to even further, looking towards the left arm, the left fingers. Now, just be careful you're not tensing into the left wrist or the left forearm. I'm really, the arm is lengthening, not because I'm pulling it down, I'm, I'm lengthening it, allowing the ribs to soften. Now, as you continue to do this movement, See if you can look first towards the left arm as it lengthens down with the head and eyes and then turn the head and eyes as you're reaching the left arm down to look towards your right arm which is also lengthening away. So you're alternating looking first to the left arm and then looking towards the right arm. And have the idea, as you're doing this, how the two sets of fingers are lengthening away from each other each time you do the movement. And, and of course what you'll begin to feel is more the shape of the chest, how those ribs on the left hand side coming together, ribs on the right hand side, there's a very specific bend in the spine occurring to help you lengthen the two arms away from each other. 
such a lovely movement to do. Now the next time you are looking at your right arm, stay there and see if you can pull in the tummy and breathe in and let the pelvis release. So you push into the foot, pull in the tummy, breathe in to think of lengthening the arms away from each other, pulling in the tummy and breathing in. And then please pause, leave it alone and take a good rest. Such a lovely movement to do. There's more more coming up in this lesson. Can so you feel the the flexibility um, it brings into the into the chest? Now, please pause. Bring the legs back to standing. You need to do it on the other side. Take your left arm overhead on the floor as comfortably <clears throat> in line with the shoulders as you can get it. Allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Bring the right foot to rest on the left lower leg. And first of all, just begin to explore. Can you press into the foot, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling? The idea of lengthening the thigh towards the knee. Pulling in the tummy to roll the pelvis towards that left shoulder, those ribs on the left hand side. To create the idea that the left arm let me move this cushion, it's annoying me. <laughs> that lengthen that left arm. The idea you're, you're looking for is to create a push through the spine to help lengthen the back of that hand away from you on the floor. And then begin to turn the head and eyes, if you can, to try and see that left arm, that left hand, as it lengthens away from you. So again, you'll, if you allow the chin to move away from the breastbone, the, the chest to lift a little bit and the back of the head to slide towards the right shoulder, it will help you to see that lengthening arm. Now, the next time you are there, pause, pull in the tummy and breathe in and release. So you press into the foot, pull into the tummy, breathe in a few times, pull in the tummy as you expand the chest to really think of lengthening that left arm Good. and then leave it alone and come and take a rest. And then just roll the head a little bit from side to side. Just as you're rolling the head, notice do you allow the eyes to be part of the rolling of the head? Do, what do you do with the jaw? Do you um, are you able to keep the jaw nice and free so it's not gripped to one side? And then come back to centre. Please bring your legs back to standing. Take the left arm overhead once more in the line of the shoulder. Allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Bring the right foot to rest on that lower leg as we've been doing. And now bring your attention to your right arm which is down by the side and could you begin to think of pressing into the foot, pulling in the tummy to lengthen that left arm as you reach the right arm down in the direction of the, of the feet and turn the head and eyes to look towards that right arm as it lengthens down. The idea is that as you begin to lengthen, both sets of fingers are getting further and further away from each other as you're pushing into the foot and releasing. Good. And then turn the head and eyes to look once towards the right, left arm as you're reaching the right arm down and then towards the right arm as you're pressing into the foot. So just alternating the looking from one arm to the other but whichever arm you're looking to, you're thinking of the distance between the two sets of fingers becoming greater and greater. You'll feel it's as the chest softens, that distance can really, really open out. Okay. Pause, please leave it alone.
and come and take a, a full rest on the, on the back. And then just notice, now that we've worked a little bit with both sides, how that's affecting um, your position. Certainly I, I'm feeling a bit taller, and if I was to roll my head and eyes from one side, yeah, that's definitely evened out now, as the ribs on the left-hand side have been asked to open. Now, um, pause, bring your legs back to centre, and then um, uh, allow the right knee to drift out to the side again. Take your right arm overhead once more on the, on the floor. Bring your left foot to rest on the right lower leg in the way that we've been doing. And this time have your right hand, sorry, left hand just resting on the side of the body. And begin to do a movement of pressing into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right in the way that we've been doing, allowing that right arm to lengthen on the on the floor. Good. And have the idea that your left hand is going to touch the floor on the right hand side immediately in front of you. In other words, you allow yourself to roll more onto the ribs on the right hand side as you look towards that right arm and then you come back. So you press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right and you're thinking of just so if you wanted to bring the fingertips of the left hand to the floor on the right so that your chest turns turns, and you try and turn to see that right palm which now begins to turn down towards the floor and then you come back. I'll just move over a little bit to create the space. So you press into the left foot to roll more of your chest over to the right and you, the left fingertips come to touch the floor on the right and you turn the head and eyes to see that right arm. So you can see I'm beginning to roll more onto the right side and then come back. Now, the next time you do this, See if you can stay more on the side and then lengthen your left arm on the floor, on the floor, and then come back a little bit. So my left hand is on the floor and I'm reaching directly to the right and slightly down. And what that begins to, to do, you can feel, is it the the ribs on the left hand side really begin to come close together and it creates a pull, pull through the, the neck and the spine. And, I, and I, you can think of the right, sorry, the left ear following the left shoulder to help you lift the head to look towards that right palm as it turns towards the floor and then you slowly release back. So you reach the left arm over to the right on the floor, keep reaching, keep sliding that left arm, and you'll feel it creates a moment when the left ear can follow the left shoulder and the back of the head travels in a little arc in space, so that lifting of the head becomes effortless to look towards that lengthening right arm and then release. Such a nice movement to do um, where it uh, really helps to get this feeling that the lifting of the head has so much to do with how the chest is moving and operating um, to make the lifting of the head an easy and effortless thing. Just pause. And then please take a rest for a second. And just noticing the change of uh, contact, if any, into the floor. I can certainly feel my ribs reorganising as a result of that. Once you've rested, please bring the legs back to standing. 
take the left arm overhead on the on the floor allow the left knee to drift out to the side bring the right foot to rest on the left lower leg in the way that we've been doing and then bring your right hand onto the chest and then begin to gently press into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left and then with your right hand think that you're just going to bring the fingertips to the floor on the left so you allow the head the chest to turn and the head and eyes continue to look at that left arm so that you press into the foot pull in the tummy the right hand reaches to the floor on the left which helps to turn the chest so I'm really rolling around the left armpit to try and see that left arm, left palm, which begins to turn down towards the floor. And then once you've got used to that, then begin to more actively reach the right arm away from you on the floor. On the floor. And, and you can feel as you begin to reach that right arm directly away from you, the ribs on the right hand side begin to concertina together and the right ear, think of it following the right shoulder so that the head begins to lift so that you can really turn to see that left arm as it lengthens away from you. Letting yourself come towards the back as you release pressing into the foot as you're reaching through that right arm to help you lift the head. Good. And then pause. Please leap slow and take a, take a rest. Notice how that feels in, in resting. Again, just roll the head a little bit lazily from side to side. Certainly evened up on, towards the right hand side now. And then please pause, bring your legs back to standing, interlace the hands uh, to the roots of the fingers, turn the palms away from you, and then bring your interlaced hands overhead. So we did this a lot in the lesson last week. Allow your right knee to drift out to the side. Bring your left foot to rest on the right lower leg as near to the knee as you can comfortably get it without being on the knee and then begin to press into the left foot keeping that knee looking towards the ceiling to roll the pelvis to the right in the way that we've been doing trying to keep that knee looking towards the ceiling and then as you begin to push into the foot extend the arms and try and turn to see the palms as they extend. So your focus is on particular on lengthening your right arm. So you push into the foot, you turn the head and chest to try and see that length, the lengthening arms. And you'll notice that the whole of my chest has been turning in the way that we've been looking at earlier. So again, you really begin to roll over that right armpit to look at the arms as they lengthen away from you. Good. Pressing into the foot. Good. Good. And now stay here and see if you can pull in the tummy as you breathe into the chest. So you pull in the tummy as you press into the foot. See if you can expand the chest pulling in the tummy to expand the chest and then leave it alone and take a rest. And then please, once you've rested, bring the legs back to standing, interlace the hands once more, perhaps changing the interlace to your less familiar interlace, turn the palms away and bring your hands overhead. Allow the left knee to drift out to the side Bring the right foot to rest on the left lower leg. And now we go to the other side. So you press into the foot, try and lengthen the arms 
as you turn the chest, turn the arms to the left as you extend them and try and turn the head and eyes to see the lengthening arm. So in particular, just notice, focus on the left arm lengthening. That's it. As you extend the arms, turning the head and eyes. And then pause and have a rest. Isn't that a lovely movement to do? Good. So again, just take a moment to rest on the back. So definitely my ribs again are coming closer down towards the floor. And then please bring your legs back to standing. Allow the right knee to drift out to the side. Bring your left foot onto the right lower leg as we've done before. Interlace your hands once more. Bring them over the top of the head, bent, bent to begin with. And return to the movement we just did. So you press into the left foot, try and roll the pelvis towards the ribs on the right as you extend the arms turning the head and eyes to try and see the lengthening palms. So just as we did before. And then once you've done that three or four times, pushing into the foot, then think, could you turn the arms and the chest and the head and eyes in the other direction? So it's very, feels very different. So you're pressing into the left foot to try and roll the pelvis to the right, but you're trying to turn. It's much more challenging to do the chest to look to the arms as the as you take the arms and the chest to the left, to the left. And don't worry about doing it perfectly. Just do what you can to see what that feels like. Definitely feels much more restricted. Um, uh, movement. So just pause, take a moment to rest and then uh, once you've rested bring the legs back to standing, tilt the left knee out to the side, bring the right foot to rest on the lower leg, interlace the hands once more, perhaps changing the interlace to the less familiar grip, bring the arms over the head and again begin to press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left and you extend the arms, to uh, turning the head and eyes to look to the arms to the left as you do this. So again, you allow yourself to the chest to roll as you extend the arms. Just nice, easy breathing. And then once you've done it a few times, then see, can you continue to press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left? but extend, try to turn the chest to the right as you, as you press into the foot. So much more difficult to do for me to this side than it was to the other side. So you just do what you comfortably can to find this twist. <laughs> yeah. Leave it alone and take a rest. Again, it's another one of those lessons, I keep on saying this, it's so fabulous if you're a golfer, a swimmer, a racket sports player, a cyclist, you know, all those kind of things, great for undoing the spine, for helping to find the rotation through the all parts of the spine. Next week's lesson builds on some of these um, moves, uh, uh, a lesson I love, love doing and love teaching. Um, please bring your legs back to standing and this time just have your heels perhaps a little bit further away from you than you might normally place them. So just take them a little bit further away from you and then once more interlace the hands, bring them over the top of the head to the floor, turn the palms away from you and begin to push, push the feet down into the floor to bring the pelvis into that 12 o'clock position and as you do that think of extending the arms away from you and release. So you push the heels in particular down into the floor, 
to try and flatten the lower back to the floor as you extend the arms away from you. And as you do this, see if you can breathe in to extend the arms. Just see how that is. Good. And then uh, pause, change the interlace to your other interlace, turn the palms away, and then once more think of pushing into the feet to flatten the lower back as you extend the arms. Good. And then just for a few times, see as you extend the arms, could you lift the head to look towards your tummy and release. So you lift the head to look towards the tummy. Notice how my voice has changed to extend the arms. Just see if you can differentiate the head movements from the arms. And then pause, keep the head down, and again just return to pushing into the feet, pulling in the tummy as you extend the arms. And once you've done a few of those, take a, a good and final rest on the floor. So, very interesting, I feel my heels are much more underneath my hip joints than they were before. I can feel more of my back down uh, into the floor and also a real sense of length along that midline, midline from the top of my head down towards my heels. And, and I'm feeling, if I think about my imaginary balance beam, okay, a much more even now on, on that beam. Okay, just one more time, just roll the head a little bit from side to side. So just nice and slowly. And see, can you sense the, how the contact underneath the fingertips just changes subtly? as the head rolls. And you may also feel a little shift of pressure underneath the heels as you roll the head from side to side. Okay. Now pause, bend the knees, take as much time as you like to transition to the side and eventually come up to sitting and to standing. And when you do come to standing, I, again I just uh, encourage you just to take a moment to see, feel how that feels in standing, how the weight falls down into the feet and the heels. So um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. As I said, it's the second in this mini series, uh, uh, another one to come next week. I just want to say again, I really appreciate those people who take the time, who have taken the time to comment on the earlier videos. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe in this lockdown situation and see you next week.